In this video, I demonstrate how to set up and configure a cross-platform development environment for the cross-compilation of C and C++ programs for embedded Linux devices. I've made this video twice before, but they tend to go out of date. The last video went out of date quickly when there were severe server problems with Debian Wheezy. This video is focused on Debian Jesse, which was officially released on the 25th of April 2015. I am hoping that the instructions in this video remain valid for quite some time. The good news is that the Debian team have done a great job and the process is now easier than it was ever before. This environment will work for any embedded Linux device, but the BeagleBone Black is used in this case. The video covers several topics, such as installing a toolchain for cross-compilation, installing the Eclipse C++ development tools, which is known as CDT, using the Remote System Explorer plugin for Eclipse, automatically deploying an executable to the remote platform on compilation, and cross-platform debugging within the Eclipse environment. This video was created to support the materials in Chapter 7 of my book, Exploring BeagleBone. The video is self-contained and you don't need the book to follow this video. However, I have not covered some additional materials such as GitHub integration, change routes, Doxygen integration. For the support materials and all of the source code for this book, please see exploringbeaglebone.com. For this installation, I'm using a Debian Jesse, which is Debian 8 image, and it's a brand new image. There's nothing installed except for the steps that are described in chapter 3 at the bottom. All I've done is installed the, um, it's running inside an Oracle VirtualBox uh, instance. Uh, so the only thing that I've done here is just set up the uh, the Linux uh, additions within VirtualBox. And also I've installed CairoDoc at the bottom here um, just to make it easier to access the terminal. So those instructions are described at exploringbeaglebone.com slash chapter three. Uh, so we can just open up a terminal. And just to confirm the image, we can use uh, ScreenFetch. You can do you can install ScreenFetch, it's just a package, app get ScreenFetch. And you can see it's Debian Jesse and I'm using it inside a, a virtual uh, a virtual box image. So it's got a, it has a, a portion of my uh, memory and uh, my machine. Um, so just make sure you've sudo installed for the following steps. So you can do that. I already have it installed, I think. Okay, you've got my password, um, apt sudo, yeah, it's already there. And just make sure as well that under vi sudo that you've added in user privilege specifications. So maloid all equals all, colon all, all. Okay, that's fine. You can exit the root and control L to clear the screen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is update the sources list. And uh, th this is what we need in order to uh, install the cross tools. So to do this, we go into cd slash etc slash apt sources dot list dot d. Tab will com auto complete the line. So in this directory, uh, there's nothing there at the moment. We want to make a, f we want to make a, um, a file. So I'm going to go sudo nano cross tools dot list so cross tools dot list is the name of the file and we're just going to edit that with nano okay and the only entry that has to go in here is um, deb http colon slash slash mdebian dot org slash tools slash debian space jesse space main and that's it. Control X. Just to show the detail, and that's all we need at the moment. Um, the next thing we need to do is install curl. So sudo apt get install curl. So it's already installed. That came. I, I might have actually one thing I might have installed is the build essentials. So um, sudo apt get install build essentials 
I needed that for the guest editions. Oops, build essential. Okay, so that's up to date. So make sure that you've sudo apt get install build essential before you continue any further. Um, the next step is we have to download the um, Endebian toolchain archive key. And to do this, it's a long line, it's all in one line, curl, HTTP colon slash slash mdebian mdebian.org slash tools slash debian slash mdebian toolchain um, minus archive dot key pipe sudo apt key uh, add minus mdebian.org tools debian mdebian toolchain archive key so just make sure you spell mdebian correctly okay that worked perfectly 100 percent okay that's done there at the moment so we can we can we can we can continue on from there so i'm going to go back to my root directory okay um there's nothing there uh so we need to now add an architecture so for this example, I'm going to cross develop to arm hard float. So we can do that. We can say sudo dpkg minus minus add minus architecture a r c h i t e c t u r e uh, arm hf. Okay. We can see at the moment the print the current architecture is arm. Uh, sorry, AMD64, that's my current architecture on my current machine. And print the foreign architecture. Our architectures, actually, we can have multiple. My only foreign architecture is ARM HF. So that's the one, one I'm planning to build. Okay, we can update, sudo apt get update. Okay. And importantly, you'll see down at the bottom, it's pulling in my ARM HF packages. All going well. The next step is fairly straightforward and really important. sudo apt get install cross build minus essential. It's much easier to do this under Jesse than it is under, than it ever was on any other. Uh, if it works, than any other release like uh, Wheezy. So sudo apt get install cross build oh, e -S -S -E -N -T -I -A -L, uh, ESS ENTIAL ARM HF. Uh, 111 meg, yes, that's fine. And you can see there that it's planning to install a lot of different tools that are important uh, G, G 4.9 minus ARM minus Linux, GNU EABI HF, and all the other tools that we need as well for, for cross development. Okay. Go ahead with that. Okay, so that looks good. We can test it now. So we'll go into, I'm in my root directory. Um, oops, I jumped out. So there's nothing here, it's a brand new image. So I'm just going to create a, a test C++ file just to test the application. So we can just go uh, nano test.cpp. Um, ash include. IO stream. Um, whoops, that's kind of yellow. Using namespace std uh, int main uh, hello from a uh, an arm. Okay, so just hello from an ARM HF architecture, uh, endl. So we can put out control X, save it, yes. More test.cpp just to show that it shows up and everything looks good. Hopefully there's no mistakes in that, I don't think so. Uh, so we can compile this now. Uh, we should be able to type ARM, Linux, GNU EAB HF, G++, test.cpp minus O, test. So minus O, my output file name is test. And that's it. Um, 
can see there's my executable and it shouldn't execute. Dot slash test. Cannot execute binary file, exec format error. And that's a good sign because that means that we're building that for the ARM hard float instruction set. So I'm currently on an AMD 64-bit machine. Uh, well, it's an Intel 64-bit machine. Um, so it means that I shouldn't be able to execute it on this platform. So we can, we can, we could just transfer it to the BeagleBone to test it. Um, so I'm going to SFTP it to my BeagleBone, which is SFTP and it's MLOID at 192.168.7.2. Uh, yes, I want to continue to connect. Uh, okay, I'm connected. So I'm going to put my, what was it called again? Test. Put test. Okay, exit. Um, and now I'm going to SSH over to my BeagleBone so I can execute it on the BeagleBone. Um, LOID. It's my username on the BeagleBone. 192.168.7.2 is the default internet over USB IP address for the BeagleBone. Um, so you can see I'm on the BeagleBone, Malloy D at BeagleBone. Um, the GitHub repository is there. Uh, and the file that I just put there this second is May 5th. The file, it's um, I can just execute it now. So let's just try it. Dot, dot, dot slash test. Hello from an ARM HF architecture. So that's exactly what we would expect. So at this point, I now have a working um, cross-compilation environment on my, on my desktop machine. So my AMD 64-bit machine can cross-compile code that can execute directly on my ARM HF architecture, such as the BeagleBone. Okay, I'll just return back to my desktop machine. I'm back to my Debian Jesse desktop machine. And all I have here is my test CPP and my test executable. Um, so I'm just gonna look at two different things that are optional before you go on to the installation of Eclipse. One is the use of multi-architecture code. And this is a lovely feature of building, cross-developing under Jesse, is that it has good support for multi-architecture installs. Uh, so for example, we can do this. We can say sudo apt get install. Um, and let's say we install a, a, any any driver, lib, lib icu dev. Now, if I hit enter at this point, it would install lib icu dev for my desktop machine, which is my AMD64. But if I put colon arm hf at the end, you'll see that it's going to install the ARM HF version of my tools. So you can see it's going to install libicu dev ARM HF uh, version 5.2. So I'm going to continue on with that. Okay. And you'll see that it, under Debian Jesse, this installs these packages under slash user. Um, slash lib slash arm gn arm linux gnu ebi hf if we go ls minus l uh, let me just do ls you can see my lib ic icu um, io and all the other packages for version 52. so that's that's my installation of those packages the reason that that's very useful is because if there's a library a third-party library that you need for your project you can use that structure to install um, third-party libraries to make it easy to cross-compile for your ARM platform. Uh, one other thing we can do, which may be useful, it's it, it can be buggy at times, just to cd tilde slash control L to clear the screen, is to install QEMU, which is an emulation for ARM, so that we can emulate the ARM, ARM HF architecture. So we can do that, sudo apt get install uh, QEMU user static user emulation mode uh, 82 meg yeah that looks good control L so again in my directory I have my test application and if you remember just a moment ago I executed this test application and it wouldn't work because of the fact that it was uh, an ARM HF binary if I actually type dot slash test now 
you see it works. And what's happening here is my QEMU user emulation mode is actually interpreting this code for ARMHF, uh, the ARMHF architecture. So it's emulating it and I'm getting my output now at this point. Um, I think it's useful to have that, but it's not necessary for cross development. The next step is that I'm going to install Eclipse on my desktop machine. going to install Chromium very quickly. Eclipse.org and I'm going to download it. Why isn't my button active? Okay. Eclipse IDE for Java developers? No. Java enterprise developers? No. Eclipse for C++ developers, Linux 64-bit. It's picking up that I'm in Ireland, so it's downloading from there, so we can go along. Thank you for downloading. CD tilde slash downloads. D downloads. Okay, it's my only file. tar minus xvf or xvf Eclipse. Okay, um, and that's it. So it, it ha you end up with the Eclipse folder. Now Eclipse um, runs directly within the folder. So I'm just going to move this Eclipse folder, um, Eclipse to tilde slash. Um, okay, CD Eclipse. And now it just means that I can execute it directly within that folder from now on. And I think that's a sensible way to use it. It's installed for this user account. So we can execute it. Okay. Eclipse Luna starting up. There's a few messages there, GTK messages, but they look okay. Uh, home Meloid workspace, that's okay. That'll do us fine for our home directory. So Eclipse Luna has started up on my machine. Okay, and it's set up for C++ development. There's a good guide at the start that gives you an overview and tutorials of how it works. And um, that, looks, that looks good. So now that we have it running, we can create a new project, file, new, C++ project. And this is a lovely feature of Luna, is that there's a new cross GCC option up here. So I'm just gonna call this project test arm. And I'm going to use the Hello World C++ project just because it's, it's easy. And choose the cross C, C, uh, G, uh, CC. Uh, set the author. Um, next. We want to debug and release option. And this is where we set up the cross GCC command. And the compiler, the cross compiler, we remember is arm minus Linux minus GNU EABIHF. So we can just enter that here arm minus Linux minus GNU EABIHF minus. The minus is important. And that, if you remember correctly, is in the direct is in the directory user slash bin. Okay. And we can finish. Uh, we can close the screen and we're in our project. Okay, so everything looks good. I'm just going to change it slightly. Hello world arm uh, is the message here so that it's going to print out hello world arm at the end of the, uh, when we execute it. At the moment, my project has its includes and its source. Uh, you can see that the includes includes the arm Linux GNU ABI HF uh, directory uh, by default. And we should be able to save this and project, build project. And it looks like it worked. Doesn't seem to be any issues, no problems. Um, build took 392 milliseconds, that's a good sign. Everything looks like it's in order. And you can see here that we have a binary and this is very important. The test arm, arm LE should be present at the end of this. This means that we, are, we have built a binary and the instruction set is arm LE, okay. Um, we should be able to even execute it here. 
Now, the only reason I'm allowed to execute this here is because I installed QEMU earlier in this in this video. If I don't, if you don't install QEMU, you'll get an error at this point here. The properties are still set, so C++ build. Build environment is still set. We can set our environment variables and so on. It's automatically detected because of the fact that we have this uh, tool chain installed. So under C++, we can still set the paths and uh, library directories, library paths and so on, but they are automatically detected because of the way that we've set this project up. However, just be aware that this is where if you have to add in a third party library or your own source code in a different directory, do it through your project properties. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the remote system explorer. So for this, we're going to install new software, set this to Luna. It was quite slow to appear under general purpose tools. We can go down and somewhere here we should have remote system explorer user actions. So I'm going to select that and install this next. Okay. Framework for contributing user defined actions and compile commands. I accept the license agreement, which I've read and press finish. Restart the oops, restart. Yes, I would like to restart. Okay, so not too much has changed. But if I go in here now, window, show view, other, somewhere remote system, remote system, I think. Yeah. Remote system, and it appears down here. Now I I prefer it up here, so I'm going to move it up here. And at this point, this, this is how we're going to connect to the BeagleBone. So the whole purpose of the Remote System Explorer is to be able to con connect to the BeagleBone. The alternative is to um, FTP your application over to the BeagleBone every time like I did earlier and then execute it on the BeagleBone. But this will allow us to integrate everything together. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, I'm going to add a connection to the BeagleBone. So it's the Linux system. Next, and the host name is 192.168.7.2. That's the IP address of the BeagleBone on my network. The connection name is a name that we can give it uh, to make it easy. And next, okay, we're going to use SFTP. We're going to SSH the files, that'll do fine. Um, next, we're going to use processes shell Linux, that's fine. And for our shells, we're going to use SSH shells. Okay, and terminal SSH terminal, hit finish. Okay, so that gives us a remote view of the BeagleBone, and, and the really good thing about this is we should be able to just build our executables and deploy them directly to the, the BeagleBone, which is, is going to be very useful. So you can see if we now connect to this, connect, um, okay. Now, I just did this a second ago, but you should be prompted for your username and your password, but you can see that um, it's storing my username and password because I just did uh, a minute ago. Um, so we go in, you can see that we can see the files that are in the directory, you can see the text the test program from just earlier and the GitHub repository. Um, and you can see that we can do things like we can set up a terminal. We can just say launch terminal and it appears here. And you can see I'm now within Eclipse on my desktop machine, but I'm straight away inside my executing a, a, an SSH terminal directly within my BeagleBone. So these are lovely features as part of Eclipse for cross development, especially when we're working with a live uh, embedded Linux platform. Um, so that gives us our terminal um, and we can just see that that was the same dot test worked perfectly as before. And so I can close that. Um, so we could take our executable. One way we could do this is we could transfer. If I, if I take my test, I can delete this, for example. That's the one I built earlier. I could, for example, take my test arm binary, right click it and go copy and go to remote system into my home directory and go paste. 
and you'll see that it copied my test arm application in there. I just close the terminal, I'll open up a new terminal again. Launch terminal, uh, ls minus l, and you can see that my uh, test arm binary is there. One problem is that if you copy and paste like this, it will not capture the executable attribute. So it means we have to chmod uh, a plus x test arm uh, so that it now has the executable flag set. Now we should be able to go test arm. And it says hello world arm, the same as our code example above. So you can see that this is one way that we could build and deploy our applications. It's easier than SFTPing and SSHing in. Well, I'm already, I'm still SSHing in, but it's a, it's a, it's an easier way to deploy the application from within the Eclipse environment. But we can improve this further. So one way we can make this even easier for ourselves is to make it so that our desktop machine has full access to the BeagleBone directly without the need for a password. And to do this, and Control L to clear the screen, I'm going to use SSH minus keygen to generate a public private RSA key pair. I'm just going to leave this blank. Uh, empty, empty again. So that's my empty random uh, passphrase. And I'm going to do SSH minus copy this ID to Malloyd at 192.168.7.2. Okay, I'm copying this file in to install the key. I've entered my password now um, so that I've authenticated myself on the BeagleBone and I'm now back on my desktop machine. Uh, the interesting thing is if I now SSH into my BeagleBone, SSH Malloyd at 192.168.7.2, you'll notice that I didn't have to enter a password. And, and that's a useful feature because that allows us to automatically deploy our executable from within the Eclipse environment directly onto the BeagleBone. And we can do that as a post-build step. So just to make it very clear, I'm on the BeagleBone now. So I'm on uh, Linux 3.8.13, bone 70. Uh, so we're going to set up this post-build step. So in my project, if you remember, my binary is called test arm. Uh, so we want to copy that automatically to our remote uh, file system. I'm just going to delete that here just to make it clear that we're doing this automatically now. So delete the object on the remote system. You can see test arm is now gone. So back into my directory. So we can go to project properties, um, C, C++ build, settings, build steps. And I'm going to put in a post build step. So this happens after our application is built. So I'm going to use the SCP command, which is covered in chapter, uh, chapter 11 of the book, test arm, which is the name of the executable in our build directory, to Malloyd at 192.168.7.2 uh, and then colon slash home is the path Malloyd and we're going to copy it directly to BBB test just for to demonstrate that I'm renaming the application to test arm okay so press OK that seems to be OK you'll notice there's still nothing there so if I project build project or hit the play button and check the console and you can see here that there's make minus no print directly post build scp command has been called there at the end and everything looks good you'll find any errors there at that point for example if your um, the previous step didn't work correctly so at this point we can go into our remote system and you can uh, click here make sure you refresh uh, or hit f5 and you'll see that we have our BBB test program there. So at this point, we can go ls minus l, and we've got our test arm that was there before, that was the old one. Delete that. And dot slash BBB test, and you can see hello world arm, just to show how well this works. So again, when I execute this, it's hello world arm. I'm just gonna update this. So let's imagine we're making a change to our project. Hello world, BeagleBone. Okay, so all we have to do is 
as here, project, build project. I think that was fine. Dot slash pb test. Oh, didn't work. What happened there? Oh, I never saved the file. Okay, save the file. Project, build project. Now try it. Hello world, Beaglebow. Okay, and and that's that's working very well. So that means now that we can very quickly and very easily remote deploy our application, build our application, make a change and remote deploy it to the BeagleBone um, with one click. And I think that's very useful. The next step is that I'm going to install uh, remote debugging on the BeagleBone. This is an advanced feature that allows us to deploy an application to the BeagleBone and yet run our debugger and see our visual output from within Eclipse on our desktop environment, which is very useful. The first thing we need to do though is on our BeagleBone, we need to install a GDB server. So sudo apt get install gdb server. Probably from my password. Okay, that's handy. It's already installed by default. That's the default Debian distribution. GDB server is installed by default. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to open up a terminal to my local machine. So if I come down here, I can open up a terminal. So I'm on my, this is my desktop machine and I just want to install multi-architecture debugging. So sudo apt get install um, gdb minus multi-arc. Okay, so that's done. We just have to do one more thing. I have to go into my workspace directory. Workspace, yeah. And I just have to create a file in here. And the file is a hidden file, so it has a dot in front of it. So we can edit this, uh, nano dot, and it's called gdb init. So nano dot space dot gdb init. And this just needs one line and it's very simple. Set architecture arm. And that's it. All we're doing there is telling it, telling the um, remote architecture, well, the multi-architecture debugger that we're using an ARM uh, remote machine. Save that, Control X, Y to save, and just check that it's, it's fully in place, and it is. Okay, so we can go back to Eclipse now. I'll just leave that there to the side. We can go back to Eclipse. And the next thing is we want to just set up a debug configuration. So under Run, go down to Debug Configurations, and here you'll see, there's a couple of different entries here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And you'll see under these categories, we have C++, C++ C++ application, attach application, postmortem debugger, and remote application. We're interested in remote application. I'm just going to delete this here just um, for clarity. Uh, leech, delete the launch configuration, yes. And I'm going to add a new one in here. New, okay, so all the settings here are taking place under remote application. Okay, so this connection to BeagleBone, that's okay so far, I'll come back to that. Under debugger, we want to set this, you see that it's, I don't know if it's picked it up or if it's just found it. We can right click, show hidden files in our workspace directory. Pretty sure it found it okay, that's fine. And we just need to change this to uh, slash user slash bin slash gdb multi arc. Okay. Other options, well, we can set the gdb server, it's set for two, three, four, five. Uh, we can just set that for one, two, three, four five just to be consistent with what was in the book we also have to set the path the remote path for the application so we're going to connection to so you see here under remote absolute file path for C++ application you can see that it's actually on our local machine so we need to change that to be the remote machine so we can browse my home and we can deploy it to here okay so at this point we should be able to debug. So 
let's try and see what happens. Okay. There's a debug perspective. That's good. Good, good, and good. So yes, perspective now. Okay, so everything looks good. There's a breakpoint set by default at the start of main, which is what we want. Everything looks good so far. Okay, we can just resume this and run it to completion. Um, I'm just going to change this now so that we, we um, return back to our C++. I'm just going to create a, an, a, a very simple test. Int x equals 5, uh, oops, x plus plus, and that gives us a variable that we can set a watch on. Okay, so the variable present, project, run, debug as, just see why that's happening. I don't know why it's running there. So we'll have to execute it from here, test arm debug remote application, um, source to save. Okay, I should have saved that. In debug perspective, yes it is. Switch to debug to spec perspective. So you can see here, it automatically picked up my variable x as being initially equal to zero. We can step over that line there. You see that x now has the value of five, which is what we'd expect after completing line 13 here. X plus plus should increment this to six. And the real value in this is that it allows us to build, and, and it indeed it does, x has become six. The real value in this is we can connect hardware to the BeagleBone or to your embedded Linux platform at this point and trigger LEDs or drive motors and see exactly the physical impact or read sensors. So you can read sensor values from sensors and write values to change motors and so on. And it allows you to debug your application live. And, and that's a very valuable feature um, in embedded Linux development because you are attaching your... your, your, your um, embed a Linux platform to external hardware. Finally, we can step over and it should print out our message. Hello world BeagleBone is, appears on the BeagleBone side and uh, continue to step, step through. It should return zero and quit the application. And that's the end of our application. So we're, we're finished. Um, we can view this assembly and get an indication of the, uh, of, of, of where we are and what the instructions are and so on. But that's that's essentially as the project has been built. Uh, one, one problem I've seen arise is that you need to specify the libraries. It seems to be perfect here at the moment. Uh, hit stop to finish the whole thing. Um, project, uh, run, run configurations. Just one last thing that you might need to do, debug configurations, um, debugger, shared libraries. You may have to specify the shared libraries here. So arm linux gnu eabi hf so that just means that we have our shared library set up for our project um, apply the changes and we can just set up a remote debug just in case there is an issue uh, with your configuration you may have to have to do this and you can see it's working exactly the same there's no issue uh, we can step over again and you'll see our variable set as five x plus plus uh, you see it becomes six uh, and we can just run to completion. So that's it. That's a fully working installation. We've got remote deployment of our application. We have remote debug. We can connect it to hardware and debuggers right from our desktop machine, which is quite powerful and gives us a good visual control over, our, over the code that we're building on the BeagleBone. So hopefully that's helped you configure and set up your environment. Thank you.